Hey Dreamers, Bryce here from Midnight Notion, singer, songwriter, musician, and a big fan of Metallica, but I have no idea what my favorite Metallica song is. Could it be Atlas, comma, Rise? Let's use math to find out. Cue the intro. So Ted, give it to me now for the best Metallica song. Atlas, comma, rise, exclamation mark, is the second song off of Hardwired to Self-Destruct. I'm excited for this song because it's the return to form for Metallica. Of course, we talked about Death Magnetic being a return to form, but this really, genuinely, to me, feels like something from Justice or Ride the Lightning. I don't know, it just it just fits into that category for me, but I can't grade it based off of my previous thoughts of it. All I could do is listen to it together with you and me together. We're going to pause it any time I hear something interesting. I'm going to talk about it then I'm gonna grade it using the following criteria composition memorability emotional response instrumentation and lyrics each category is a zero to four scale with a grand total of 20 possible points we'll find out at the end of the video if this song has what it takes to get to the top 20 before we do make sure you hit that subscribe button why? Because I heard if you hit that subscribe button, someone today is going to fall in love with you. And I mean, I guess if you're already in love, too bad. But if you're not in love, congratulations. And if you're already in love, somebody's going to fall even more in love with you. So it works for everybody, really. <laughs> Let's listen to the song. Okay, so already right off the bat, we have some interesting builds. We have ba 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 da da da. That repeats, and then we have a tag that da 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 da, and they kind of switch between them. Sometimes they do four of the main line with a tag on the end. Maybe it's three, maybe it's two, whatever. They switch it up. They introduce the ba da 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 da, and then they go back to the main thing. But then they come back to ba da 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 da, and then they go back to the main thing, and then they do ba da 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 twice through. And now we have a brand new riff. And right as they've introduced a brand new riff, they're gonna cut it off with a callback to what they started with and go to another. Another new riff. This is also interesting because I think we're in A. We haven't heard a song in A in ages. Hey, A in ages. Wow. Uh, pun intended, I guess. We had some A minor in Rebel of Babylon, and we've heard some, you know, of their cleaner stuff uh, in the Load the Reload album, but like an actual hard rock A tune, I mean, this is kill them all. I mean, really think about it. We have Hit the Lights. We've got, well, I'm not going to sit and list them all, but the A, the feeling of playing an A on that fifth string as the root note is something we haven't heard in a long time. And yes, we'll shift down. We'll use that low E again in the song later. Later, but that main riff hitting on A is very intriguing. Also in this song, time signature changes and done tactfully. Now I saw a tab for this once that was claiming that the time, uh, the time is uh, the the tempo is 95 BPM, and that the 4/4 goes ba 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 da da da. That's one and a two and a three and a four. Right? It takes that long. I like to count it as Ba 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 da da da. So one two three four one two. I feel like I I usually tend to count with the rhythm of the song. One two three four. However you choose to count it, I don't know that. I mean, there's probably if you go to the recording session, there is an official answer somewhere. Maybe there's a tab booklet that says it's a one and two and three and. But I mean, I like to think of metal bands like this as playing fast. And so I think of this song as a one, two, three, four. So when I see 95 beats per minute and the standard song time or like tempo is usually 120, I like to think that they're playing faster than 95. They're probably up in the high hundreds going one, two, three, four. That's my personal opinion. However, whatever way you choose to count this, there are odd time signatures throughout the song by adding in one little extra ba da 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 there's like an extra little hit on the end. And I'll see if I can point out one of them. I don't have all of them memorized, but just know when you start feeling yourself off, uh, it's a time signature change. However, 
On top of that, even though they're changing the time signature, this is exactly what I've been talking about for multiple videos now. It's an, uh, the, the change doesn't feel awkward because it's a familiar riff. We started with ba 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 da da So even when it comes in on a weird beat, we know how it goes already because we had like eight, 16 some measures in the beginning to familiarize ourselves, ourselves with it. So when it comes back, no surprise, doesn't feel off. It fits with the song. I like it. Let's go. Writing's not that easy, but Grammarly. <laughs> So you see, I had like a one and then it was like on the and it switched to the ba 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 ba. Very intriguing way of counting. Let's go back just one more time. I want to show you how that goes. Uh, now I'm going to count it the, the way that I would count it in what they say is eighth notes. What I'm saying is quarter notes. Let's see what, how that adds up. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it would be a three, four measure in my version going straight into the four, four of the intro. That's how I would count it. But again, I'm not the official master of all, all compositions. I could be completely wrong. That's just how I feel the song. Love those episodes. So in that version, there was a bit of, there's just a two, four measure. It could be just a, you could be like a 10, eight or a nine, eight or something in the longer version. But I like that they're switching it up. They're keeping that rhythm interesting. And we just started the vocals. We had a minute of instrumental that kept it a really interesting build to it. And each time that those hits, they don't feel like an odd time signature because it's not a time signature change, but it comes in at different spots. I don't know. I just think that's really cool. love that. Let's go back five seconds. I love this kick drum. He does like a quick little, uh, I don't know if it's a triplet or if they're just fast, like 30 second notes or on the kick drum and then hits it with a, a snare, that nice snare crack. Really cool. Right here. Bear, 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 bear. He's got a harmony going on there, and that's really, all oh, you bear, all oh, you bear. Lots of bears in this song, but the, what a cool riff. We got, we've been going pretty straight all the way through, and now we have this halftime groove with the cymbals. And then just slides. Really cool, really cool. Okay, I do want to point out the end of that chorus. I want to point out the whole chorus, actually. It took me a while to grow on this song, or this song took a while to grow on me, Where, however you want to word it. Uh, I just, I, there was something about this chorus that didn't initially catch me. Boo da 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 koo it always kind of felt a little wonky to me and that's mostly on Lars choosing to do more of a, 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 a march beat not a february or an april it's a march beat this is something someone would play if they're in an orchestra um, and it starts with just the kick drum on the hi-hat it's a very simple pattern it's not really a beat it's really just kind of uh, emphasizing what the guitars are playing. Ba, da, 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 da. 
Um, but I like I like what happens. We have like that little riff, and then the second time through, we get a climb that has the harmonized solo feel of all of their first records, right? And we got Kill 'Em All, Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, even Justice. Uh, they have the, a lot of those songs have those climbing, dueling guitar solos. This has it, but it's not a solo; it's a chorus. Very intriguing, very different. I want you to pay attention to the end of the chorus because this first chorus, each each one is going to end a little bit different. This first one we have a ba 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 da 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 da. Okay, we have that weird rhythm ba 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 ba, and then we have a straight drum fill da 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 da. Rise. Okay, Atlas da 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 da. Rise. Okay, we ended on that downbeat. Let's listen to how that changes throughout the song. They're going to add extra sections. Uh, they're going to extend that play through. Um, they're going to come back to other parts and then end the Atlas Rise at different points in future choruses, chorus I, chorus E's, chorus Sopides. <laughs> Nice. We got a little bluesy solo and the bop, 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 da 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 ba da 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 little pause there. I love when they all stop and it's one guitar just ba da da do It kind of like sucks you into the next section. It's very nice. Watch the ending. This time, watch the ending here. Okay, so we have a cool switch up. We have the ba 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 da 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 ba 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 ba. Really cool. They kind of inverted it. They did like the weird bit, the fill, the fill, the weird bit. Really cool. And then we have a rise. So Crushed in the Heavy Skies gets repeated twice. And now we have this weird climb down that, again, is very reminiscent of their early records. If you're listening to new Metallica and you're going, I wish they were more like old Metallica. Well, guess what? Here it is. This is your song. You better not trash this one because then you're a hypocrite. <laughs> but be nice to each other. It's okay. I'm not actually calling you a hypocrite. I'm just, I'm not saying you have to like this song. I'm just saying that if you look at all their old songs, the structures, the type of playing, this matches up with it almost to a T. This is absolutely Metallica's old stuff in new recording technology. If you were watching live Metallica videos on YouTube during the Hardwired to Self-Destruct, I don't know if it's still the case, but Every video ended with this riff. And then they would just loop it. And that was kind of their end screen for their YouTube videos. So if you watched a lot of them in that era, uh, you've probably heard this riff a million times. If not, welcome. I hope you like it. <laughs> Is that a different time? Was that a two four? Let's see it. I would call that two four. The other people would probably call it one four or uh, four eight or something. Uh, but I don't know. It seems like two four to me. Ooh. 
coming down. We're coming down. We had dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Now we're a little bit lower. So are we in G now? Were we in A? Were we in E? I thought that was E, but if they went down, that would mean they're in D. Uh, I don't know what note they're on. Somebody tell me below because I I don't know. We were in A, but that riff felt very E to me. Uh, do they have drop tune guitars on this song? Mm hmm. So there's a really weird ending to that solo too. We have some new time signatures in there as well. I was not really counting that close, but I could tell the changes were there. The important thing about these time signatures is that the 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 eighth note or wherever you're bobbing your head, the eighth note of the quarter note, it feels the same all the way through. Ba 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 ba. And even if they add an odd time signature, it's not odd. It still feels even. You can keep your head bobbing. That's what I'm talking about with flow. I appreciate the musical maturity of a time signature change, but I need to be able to bob my head consistently. So if you're breaking it just to throw me off, you can use that for effect, or you could just add a couple extra beats and I wouldn't even notice unless I was trying to count along. And I think that is tactful time signature changing, and I like what they're doing here. Good job. Interesting. We got a dueling harmonized guitar solo with a rhythm guitar on, but underneath still doing the dun 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 dun. We also have an interesting pattern from Lars too. We had a bat ba cat ba cat ba cat ba cat ka. All right, so the ba da da ba da da ba da da ba da da ba. So it's like four over two, right? Ba da da ba da da ba da da ba da da ba ba. So it's it, it all adds up actually in four four, but it's like a, a set of threes. Three four or four threes rather, and two twos. Uh, I don't know if I'm making sense to you, but da 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 da. And then he switched it, and it was actually uh, he was playing straight. Ba da ba da ba da. And then he was doing fills. Ba da 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 da. So really changing it up, keeping it fresh and interesting while they're soloing. Um, and now we're now we're here. So again, we have the, uh, this was the beginning of the bridge section, if you will, the solo section. We come back to the beginning of it. We started it, we had a whole solo, we had a dueling solo. Now we're back to the start of it. And then we have a reference to that very first riff again, our, our motif of the song, the, the repeating tagline. Ba, 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 ba. And now we have our final verse. Masquerade has begun, heavy is the crowd. Pay attention to the end of the chorus. Remember the first time, ba 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 rise. Okay, second chorus, ba 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 rise. Right. Okay. The second chorus had crushed in the heavy skies, crushed in the heavy skies. Atlas rise, and it doesn't really fall down on the downbeat. It kind of holds out. This last chorus has such a just powerful. Powerful ending. Watch the structure. There's 
a ah, there's a really high Let's go back one more time. I think the difference here is structurally same as the second chorus, right? We do have the one, the da 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 da, da fill, fill, da da, da da da, and then back to the fill again. So we have like a five part ending, just like the second chorus. The difference is that it, when he goes, Atlas rise. That's what he did the second time. He kind of held out rise, and then we came to the next riff. This one he holds on to it. Atlas rise and there's like a there's a rise not only to the line that he's singing but into his vocals and that pays off so freaking nicely and i can just feel myself leaning back from the mic rise! it's very very rewarding one more time Now, if I was writing the song, if I was producing the song, and I'm not, obviously I don't get to change it, it's done, it's already done, I would have ended the song here. This is a perfect ending. We had a nice big rise with that heavy energetic, he goes to the crash cymbal, psh, 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 straight riff on the drums, guitars riffing, just bump, 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 and done. I think that this part of the song could be cut off entirely and we'd have almost br like perfect brilliance, right? Maybe not perfect, but it's just, it's such a solid ending. And so this here kind of brings me down a little bit because I wish the song was over now, right? We just, uh, we only have seconds to go but I really wish they wouldn't have added this extra bit on the end. And I know that Metallica doesn't like to kind of fit into the norm. They like to try something different. They like to throw us off a little bit, uh, but I just, you know, the song is done. It had a perfect ending. It was that close. And there you have it, Atlas, comma, rise with an exclamation mark. A pretty fun song. Let's give the sucker some points, shall we? Whoosh. Composition. A lot of interesting things going on in the song. Time signature. Uh, I can't even say that. Time signature changes all throughout the song, but it all calls back to the intro. So it's familiar each time it comes around. It's like, oh yeah, that riff again. Uh, we have a pretty standard structure. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. Same as every, or bridge, verse, chorus rather. Uh, so very similar structure to all their other songs. I can't really award them like something brand new for composition, but it is pretty interesting in that they are using time signature signature changes the same way they used to way back on and justice for all and maybe earlier i think i think this is a very justice sounding song i think uh, i think that's where it falls i think about blackened and how often blackened changes its t uh, time signature uh, throughout the song there's all a lot of those weird hits but this one feels a lot smoother to bl than blackened to me in the way that it changes they aren't so rocky when they get to that weird change so uh, i li i like that i appreciate the lot that a lot the thing that knocks this song down for me is that uh, that outro just doesn't need to be as long as it is. It needs to end a little bit sooner. And there's a couple of parts of this song that's like, ah, I feel like we've been kind of hanging out here for a little too long. We can maybe get to the next part sooner. So just in the, in the length of the song, it could be just a little bit tighter, but overall it's a really cool composition. So ultimately for me, composition, it's a three. Memorability. I think the most memorable part of the song is rise right at the end. That big sh rise. It's just really cool. Atlas rise is only two words. Uh, I guess if you want to count the comma and the exclamation mark, there's a little bit extra there, but uh, we don't we don't sing grammar, so that's fine. Um, I do appreciate that. Atlas rise. I think is very memorable. The chorus. Uh, I guess you could latch onto it fairly quickly. Uh, the verses don't really stand out. I know it's but da 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 da. You know, but I. Can't can't really remember all the words. I have to sit down and learn them. I think that that bap 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 da 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 they 
play that so many times throughout the song that it's hard to forget. So I think there's a lot of memorable stuff. They could do a little bit more with the lyrics to really let them land, uh, but overall pretty memorable. So for me, memorability, it's a three. Emotional response. I ha This song grew on me. I admittedly didn't like it as much right off the bat, but the more I listened to it, the more I enjoyed it. So uh, it does stand uh, tall for me today. I'm positive about it. It's not my, uh, well, <laughs> I want to say it's not my favorite Metallica song, but we can already tell because I've given it two threes. My favorite one so far is fours across the board. So you already know it's not my favorite, um, but I do appreciate it. And if it came while I was watching them live, I would still sing along. So favorable for me, but they could do better. Emotional response, it's a three. Instrumentation, I have no complaints. I think everybody played really well together. Um, I guess I forgot the solo, but I don't think that it was a bad solo. It wasn't as bad as Hardwired or some of the others before it. Uh, I think that, uh, yeah, even with these goofy time signatures, it all locks in together. Everybody feels unified on this one, and I really appreciate that, including the lyrics. Uh, the vocalist, uh, James Hetfield, is doing a very fine job indeed. So no complaints. Instrumentally, four. Lyrics. This song references, uh, obviously, Atlas. It's a Greek mythological hero who is cursed to carry the world on his back. He's got to carry everything, all you bear, all you carry, right? He's got it right on his back. And something about the chorus feels like uh, whoever's singing the song is offering to take some of that burden off. But then you look at the verses, and the verses are very like, hey, you're kind of... You kind of sound like you're, um, you know, a self-proclaimed prophet in a way. We see the word martyr. We saw that again back on Rebel of Babylon, and that was just kind of a demo EP. It's not really a song that they play. So we could see maybe some copy-pasting going, a lot of religious symbolism going on here, putting on a crown. And well, actually, I don't even know. I'm recording multiple videos in one day, so I might be getting mixed up. But there's all this imagery in this song uh, about carrying the burden of the world, but then cursing the world world and saying like, hey, you gave me this problem, but you're kind of taking it on yourself. So you're kind of to blame. Maybe you should relieve yourself of some of that pain. So in an odd way, this song is kind of positive, question mark. I want to read something I saw in an interview. While I was reading the lyrics, I quickly checked. I wanted to see if there was another meaning behind some of this. And I found this interesting uh, quote from, from James Hetfield himself, Rolling Stone, Australia. This is what he said, quote, Lars is, I have to do everything or else it's wrong. He's got the weight of so much on him. And Atlas Rise started out as a, here, let me help you with that. You don't need to carry all that, brother. And then it morphed into more, and this is not specifically him, but I'm plugging him into this. I think he likes that. There's a drama that makes him work, and we all have a, a bit of that. He wants the control, but he doesn't really have control the illusion of control, and then the ability to complain about how you have to do everything yourself, and then you still do it. Uh, really interesting quote there from James, and when I read that, I suddenly felt the song a little bit heavier. As some of you, I hope most of you know, I am a solo artist. I write all my own music. I produce my own music. I produce my own videos. I film and edit all of this every single day. I'm doing a lot of stuff all by myself. Now, when I do play live, I do have a band and they're very helpful. You've seen them in a few of my music videos on this channel. They're wonderful human beings and I so, so, so love that they are on board to help me bring this stuff to life. But it is a lot of stuff to carry. And I could just say, you know what? I don't need to make music anymore. I could just turn it all off and go about my life doing something else. I'm a writer. I'm a, I, I, do, uh, I do acting. I do improv. I could film stuff. I could edit stuff. I have so many skills, right? But I love making music. But it also is kind of a burden. But I also love it. What do you do? You know, so I, I will to my friends complain a lot like, oh, I just wish I could get this song out. I wish I could record it sooner. I wish I could produce it sooner. I could wish it was better equipment, blah, 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 blah. It is a big burdensome weight. But also I'm doing it to myself. And I do appreciate when people lend a hand. So if you want to leave a tip, you can do so. Uh, it's in the description. 
description, a link to the PayPal if you want to leave a tip. I'm not saying that you have to. I am saying that I would be gracious to have a little help to get this setup looking even better than it does now. I always like better gear. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's that's my life, and I can now connect with this song, but I also recognize that this song also has layers of, hey, maybe you shouldn't take that all on, and I think there's a little bit of, you know, whatever. There's some weight to the song. So I really like what they're saying. I appreciate these lyrics a lot. I have no complaints. It's a four. And so Atlas Rise gets a grand total of 17 points. It is not enough to get to the top 20. Barely missed it. It's in 30th place, and it's actually tied. Should I tell you what it's tied with? I don't know if the internet wants to know. It's tied with My Apocalypse. I don't know if you agree or not. I feel like those two kind of fall similarly. Uh, there are only a couple of songs away from each other as far as release order, but that's where it falls on my list. Let's take a look at the top 20. Uh, we've got uh, one still holding its own. Nothing yet has even challenged it. Uh, something has come close. We got three-way tie in second place with Hero of the Day, Broken Beat and Scarred, and No Leaf Clover. But so far, only po perfect score goes to one so far. I'm kind of surprised. I thought there would be more up there, but that's where we are. The math saith so. So now it's your turn. Do your own math. Put it in the comments below. I want to know what score you would give this song based on my criteria. Make sure you check out Midnight Notion. I'd appreciate all of the streams and the purchases and the tips if you have them. Anything helps this band keep alive. I want. I have so much more to say, and maybe there's some new music coming somewhat soon. I don't know. I don't have anything to announce yet, but I am working on it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because tomorrow we're all going to die and then we're going to find out what happens. Uh, but we're not actually going to die. It's just going to be in a song. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you then. You're awesome.